Welcome to Self Talk with Dr. Ray Self, the place where you can get real answers to tough questions. Jesus promised you abundant life, but poor choices and dark forces stand in your way. It is time to learn how to overcome the obstacles that keep you out of your promised land. Knowledge of God will pave the path for you to walk in His blessing. I'm Dr. Ray Self. I am very excited uh, about this show. I have a very special guest uh, that I'm going to be interviewing. He's, he's with us now. And my guest is Dr. John Davis. Uh, Dr. John Davis is a very, very good friend of mine. We have uh, worked together with International College of Ministry for years. Uh, presently, uh, he is the Dean of the Word of God Bible Institute in Columbia, South Carolina. He also is the Dean of Academics for our college, my college, International College of Ministry. If you all know, if you're just tuning in for the first time, I'm very blessed to be president of International College of Ministry, an online accredited college. And uh, Dr. John, we call him, is, um, or sometimes we call him St. John, is, uh, he is the Dean, he's the Dean of Academics. He's the, also the Dean of a live satellite campus, very active, Word of God Bible Institute in Columbia, South Carolina. He's a very good friend, 43 years ministry experience, so he, he knows what he's talking about, um, a true Bible scholar, and uh, I'm just very honored. How are you doing tonight, Dr. John? I'm doing great, Doc, uh, real great, hanging in there. How are you doing, sir? Yeah, doing good, doing good, so, so glad to have you with us. So what I wanted to you on the show. Yes, absolutely. Good to be here. Thank you. Uh, what, the reason I wanted you on the show is I wanted to talk about a topic that shouldn't be controversial, but is controversial. And the topic I want to talk about, I need a drum roll here, is eternal security. Can a person who is saved lose their salvation? Now, I, I want to say from experience, um, and I'm very blessed. I've been a Christian since 1961. Do the math. But I want to say from experience that this has been a controversial topic. And people tend to be passionate on both sides of the coin. Um, mm -hmm. you know, there's, there's arguments like, well, if you think you can do, if you can't lose your salvation, you're saying you can just live and live and do whatever you want to do. And, of course, you know, I don't think that's what you know, the people who believe no. in security can do. The other argument is, you know, using Hebrews 6, uh, there, is, there are ways to lose your salvation. So here's my question. This is what I want to talk to you about tonight, Dr. John. Mm -hmm. If a person has received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, and he has come into their heart, can they lose their salvation, and why not? No, they can't. Uh, you know, one thing that I think most people don't understand is that there are Two types of sin. And if we understand that, we can understand the difference between practical sin and the sin of condemnation. So the sin of condemnation is the sin that we're all born with because of the fall of Adam. The sin of disobedience is the sin that we choose to practice. So we, we sin because we are sinners. But then that's why we have to be born again. To be born again is to be birthed out of Adam and into Jesus Christ. And the Bible said that if any man be in Christ, then he is a new creation. So while we may struggle at times with the practical sins of life, because there's no perfect person, but our, our, our salvation is secure because we are secure in Christ Jesus by the blood of the cross. And uh, the, the, the Bible is very clear about the security of our salvation. You, you said something to me on the phone the other day that really struck me. You said, you know, well, we're saved by grace uh, through faith, not by works according to Ephesians. Mm -hmm. So we're saved by grace, not by works. Mm -hmm. So if we're saved by grace and it's and we're saved, our works doesn't save us, how does our works cause us to 
to lose it. I thought that was an interesting comment. Yeah, well, well, that is true because the Bible said we are saved by grace uh, through faith. So faith is the channel through which we are saved, that grace come and save us. And the Bible said it is a gift of God and not a work. So grace is the work that God does in us through grace or by grace not the work we do for ourselves. So therefore, if it, and it says clearly, it is not a work, but it's a gift. Now, when Paul talks about those that practice, or maybe it's Jesus that said, I believe, those that practice such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. What's he referring to? Yes, well, he's referred to someone who practices those things uh, will not inherit the kingdom of God. But what we, what we sometimes fail to understand you know, God is our Father, and he says in the 12th chapter of, of uh, Hebrews that he, that he chest, as a father, he chastises and corrects his children. So, and he said, and, and it goes on to say that there is no son that is without correction and uh, uh, scourging, in effect, or chastening. So, we this this business about the license to sin because we can't lose our salvation, then uh but God chastises us and corrects us. And some scriptures said he scourges us, he corrects us even with the rod of men. So it's just like any parent that is a decent parent would not allow their children to just do anything just because they love them. But understand to that salvation is a birth. We are born again. How many times do we have to be born to be the child of our parent? Only once. We may have, you know, a shaky uh, a fellowship or association or whatever, but we can never not be our father's children. And so it is with Christ. Once we're born again, the Bible said our life, our eternal life is hid with God in Christ. Right. So uh, how can we lose it? Well, let me ask you, let me ask you a question. Here. Now, and I've heard both sides of, 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 of the argument, okay? Uh -huh. um, and, and one of the scriptures that the people say that you can lose your salvation um, is I believe it's they use Hebrews six, okay? Um, uh, as, and it says in Hebrews six four, for it's impossible for those who are once enlightened have tasted the heavenly gift or made partakers of the Holy Ghost. Uh, verse five, and they have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come. And if they fall away, to renew them again to repentance, seeing they crucify themselves to the Son of God afresh and put him to open shame. Um, so they use that to say, look, um, the people can fall away and it cannot be renewed. Um, I see that, that, that scripture's thrown up a lot. Yeah. And you know, the people that believe that people, that you can lose your salvation also think that you could uh, regain it as well. So that would refute that argument. But the, what the Hebrew six says you can't regain it. Yeah. You can't, if you can't, if that's the case, then you can't regain it. Once you, right. you get one shot at it, and that's and if you don't make it, that's it. I mean, but the conversation there, the discussion uh, of the the writer in that text, it starts in the fifth chapter. So where it talks about maturity, and he was talking about what Paul said, or the writer said that there's many more things I have to say to you, but. I can't because of your difficult of hearing, because you're still babes. And then he goes on. You see, what we have to understand that the, the chapter and verse does not cut off the subject matter. So it goes on in chapter 6 talking about to let us move away from the, the rudimentary of the, of the teaching of the scripture about laying on of hands and repentance and, and uh, from and being baptized and all of those things, let us go on to maturity. 
And then he says, in effect, that once a person, it's impossible anyway. I mean, he was talking about the futility of repeating repentance and salvation over and over again. Because if it was possible for someone to fall away once they have truly been saved, they could never be saved again anyway, but they, because they would have, they would need another crucified Savior. So the, the scripture is really saying, is teaching the impossibility of losing our salvation right, rather right. than losing our salvation and can't get it back. Right, right. And that is yeah. so it's actually arguing for uh, e eternal security. Well, the <laughs> impossibility, the impossibility is, is falling away. Those the yeah. Father have given into my hand, it's uh, no one shall pluck them away. Um, yeah. I've always thought that scripture is very strong. I also felt in Ephesians where it says we are sealed uh, by the Spirit to the day of redemption. Uh, yeah. I've always thought that was a strong argument. But again, and I'm careful here because um, I'm not trying to play both sides of the coins, but I know some yeah. of our listeners yeah. are going to say, hey, you, wait a minute, you're saying we have a license to sin, but one more time here, what you're saying, uh, John, and is that we we're chastised. We don't have a license to sin. We, we don't get chastised. have a license to sin. Yeah. And it's like my son. I have a son. I have a daughter, and they've done some things that I really don't agree with. And they were younger, especially. I would spank them. And yes. I would chastise them. And I and there's even when they got older, they would kind of break fellowship with me. And I get yeah. by some of the stuff they did. But no matter what they did, they were still my son, and that was still they my daughter. They were still absolutely, absolutely. And the Bible said in, in Hebrews again that you've forgotten. He said you've forgotten the words that are said about uh, that I deal with you as sons. And he mm -hmm. said, despise not the chastening of the Lord, because whom he loved, he chastened and correct. So the word chastisement is to train and correct. So God corrects our behavior by chastening. We don't get away with it. We don't get away with sin. Beg pardon? I said we don't get away with sin. You know what I'm I saying? Mean, we just don't. I mean, the people who say, yeah, yeah, we uh, don't just... well, you have a license to sin. No, you don't. You get in trouble. And Paul said in... Uh, uh, chapter 6 of Romans, he said, where grace abounds, should sin abound even more, may it never be. Paul even warned us yeah. against that. Yeah. yeah. But then, but, but now watch what he says, though. He said, sin, I mean, uh, grace rules through righteousness. So, so grace can only rule or can only uh, survive or provide through righteousness. Righteousness is a right standing with the truth of God or that which is aligned with the truth of God. So grace can only uh, survive or rule or be provided through righteousness. So God can never give grace at the expense of righteousness. See? So if we have God's grace, we have righteousness. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. If we, well... Well, grace is only given through righteousness. Right. So God never compromised his righteousness for the sake of grace. That's why we are chastised when we disobey or dishonor God or our salvation. Now, the thing that we have to think about, too, that is nobody is perfect. If there is no, if there is no perfect person, you, and, you know, Jesus is the only perfect person that ever lived. So if practical sin is going to cause us not to be saved, which one is it? Because no one dies perfect. So which sin does God allow in heaven? See, so obviously, if, 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 Salvation was based on our own goodness. No one would be saved. But we're saved by the grace of God. We're saved by the blood of the cross. Jesus satisfied the demand of God concerning our sin. And the grace of God removed 
the condemnation of Adam and places us in the Christ. As the Bible says, in, uh, I think it's 1 Corinthians 12, 13, that we are baptized by the Holy Spirit into the body of Christ. So that's out of Adam into the body of Christ. That's why it is said in uh, Romans 8, there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. You see? So as long as we're in Adam, we, as the Bible says in uh, John 3, that we are condemned already. See? So, but the rebirth, to be born again, is to be removed from uh, the condemnation of Adam into the liberty of Jesus Christ. And that's uh, good Romans good. 8 goes on to say that the, the, the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has delivered us, has made us free from the sin of uh, the law of sin and death. And that's the good news of the gospel. I mean, exactly. that's the incredibly good news of the gospel. Now, this is the argument I hear a lot. They say, mm -hmm. well, what, they'll, they'll come to me and they'll say, well, what about the guy who just says he's saved, but he's always, he's out drunk and he's messing around with women and doing all kinds of stuff like that. I, I, are you saying that, that he's going to go to heaven? No, I'm not saying that. Yeah, see, because the Bible says, in uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, that if any man be any man, be in Christ, he's the new creature. So if you're still old, you're not new. So you can't be both. So a new creature is that all old things are passed away. And behold, all things have come new, and all things are of God. So if a person, you know, there are many people that say that they're saved and they're not, and they're in church. You know, all of those things. That's why Jesus talked about the wheat and the tear. Because they're so similar, a novice can't tell the difference. But he said, let the wheat and the tear, let the wheat and the tear grow together. And then, and when Christ comes, he will do the separating. So wait a minute. So you so, said, we are, hold on one second. You said, since we are a new creation, okay? Uh, so yeah, if you, a person is a new I creation. there for a minute. If we are a new creation, okay? then this person is not going to be able to live like that because he's a new Absolutely. creation. So if he is living this terrible lifestyle, there's a question if he was ever born again to begin It's an with. indication that he's not born again. He's not okay. new. So okay. Jesus says in Matthew 7 that starting at the 21st verse, not everyone that said, not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom said, now many will come to me, will say in that day, Lord, Lord, didn't we do many wonderful works in your name? We would cast out devils in your name. And Jesus didn't say that they didn't, but he said, but I never knew you. You works, your works was all in iniquity. You see, so there are many people, and he's talking to people that goes to church, members of churches, pastors maybe who have done many works in the name of the Lord, but never knew the Lord themselves. Mm. See, so, so if Jesus says that, then that's evident that there are many people that appear to be saved to us, but under the uh, scrutiny of God, then he realized that they're not. That's why, again, he talks about the wheat and the tear growing together because a novice or uh, the eyes of man can't tell the difference. And we said, if we will try to root up the tear, we root up uh, wheat uh, uh, instead or, or along with that. So let them grow together. And in the last days, he will do the separating. Right. So that tells us that there are hypocrites in the church, people right. who function in, that are not saved. Right. But, but the, the scripture in Hebrews 6 that says it is impossible for a person who has experienced all of the graces of heaven, if you will, and it's impossible for them to, to fall away. If they do, the reason they can never be uh, 
uh, brought to repentance again is because they have proven the insufficiency of the blood of Jesus and did and brought him to an open shame and therefore needing another crucifixion. Right. So what many uses as uh, as the loss of salvation is confirmation that it can't be lost. Right. 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 And showing the, the impossibility. Uh, right. The impossibility of it. So, you know, to me, maybe just to, to simplify things, um, eternal security argument is not giving us permission to live however we want to live. There would be several questions. Number one, of course, number one, you mentioned earlier, there's chastisement. There's punishment. Yeah. I mean, you know, we have, yeah, a, we have a righteous father in heaven who is a judge of yeah. the universe. Yes. And we have to answer for these things. We have to answer for these. And, and number, n- number two is that Jesus said, no one can pluck them out of my hand. Okay? Yes. Um, yes. But there's also, Jesus said, you'll know them by the fruit. If a person is continuing in sin, to me, there's some question looking at the fruit of their life that they're probably not saved. Yeah, I mean, if the fruit, I mean, the fruit determines what the tree is. <laughs> right. You know. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot I of like the, you. you know, a lot okay. of excuse me. A lot of the old time Baptists um, like to use the argument of the prodigal son. You know. Yeah. Uh, you know, he leaves his father and. He goes and spends his inheritance, hangs out with the prostitutes, blows all the money, uh, ends up, you know, eating pig slop, you know, and feeding pigs, which is the worst thing you could do as a Jew, and finally comes back to his father. And some people say, see, he lost his salvation. Well, actually, even in his worst moment, he never lost his sonship. No. So they'll say, well, he, was- he never lost his sonship. Now, he lost fellowship with God, yeah. but he did not lose his sonship. Go. There you go. Yes. Yeah, he during that whole uh, 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 scenario or that discussion, he he was never not his father's son. You see, and like you said, he lost fellowship and the chastisement. As God would say, God does not come down and you know chastise us like we would do our children, but He chastises us through consequences, through so circumstances. Excuse yeah. me. So his father allowed him to suffer the consequences of his behavior. There but you because go. he was his father's son, eventually he repented and came he back. He repented and but he was his father's son. Happened. But he was his father's son throughout the whole process. Throughout, throughout the whole process. The, the whole time. Yes. Okay. My son has come home. Yeah, my son. Not, yeah. My son has returned. So, but the consequences, he wound up, yes, he wound up in the pig pen with no friends. That is the consequences of sin. Now, God said in the 12th chapter of of, um, Hebrews also that if we are without chastisement, then we are bastards and not children. That's what the King James Version says, meaning that we're illegitimate. So then... If God, if you're living this way and God is not chastising you, he said, then the reason being, you're not, you are illegitimate and not a son. Right. So if a person can do all of this without uh, chastisement and so forth, then that's, according to Hebrews, that's evidence that they're not a son. Well, this is a fascinating discussion, and I know that you and I have talked about this before, and I've heard both sides of the argument, and I'm not trying to oh, yes. I'm not trying oh, yeah. to play devil's, devil's advocate or anything. Um, oh, by no means. But, yeah. but I think it's important that we really examine the scriptures in context. And, and I think that, uh, and also, guys, please, 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 if you're going to have a theological discussion with someone that you have a disagreement, you got to remain brothers and sisters in Christ before and after. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I've seen people oh, yes. get so angry over this, Dr. John, that they don't want to talk to each other. And they'll call wow. each other names over it. I've really seen it, even in class. Wow. But we are brothers and sisters in Christ and should be able Absolutely. to discuss the Bible. That's all it's about, discussing the Bible. Yeah. And, uh, and like the Bible said, to speak the truth and love. So we'll love. we can, if we, we should be able to speak the truth of God to one another in love without falling out yeah and that's and that's 
you know, and that's what, you know, that's the point. That's the point of it. And the Bible, and I know that there's nobody has perfect interpretation of Scripture. Um, you know, we're still learning. We, we uh, every, I yes. get the same verse 50 times, and the 51st time I look at it, I'll get an understanding I didn't have before. It's something new. Yes. Yep. Yeah. All, all the time. Dr. John, it's been a real uh, pleasure having you on the show today, and uh, it's a very interesting topic. I know you such a man of the word. There's so many things we could discuss. Um, how about this? Would you just close us in prayer? How about that? Yes, I will. Okay. Father, we, we thank you, Lord, for the privilege and honor, first of all, of serving you, Lord. And we thank you, Father, that you've, you've not left us in darkness, but you've given us the light of your word. So, Father, we ask you, Lord, to open our hearts and our mind that we can understand your word, Lord, that we can hear your word, Father. We are we all brothers and sisters, Lord, though we disagree, but Lord, we thank you that our salvation is not based upon the clarity of our doctrine, that we have to have perfect doctrine, but our salvation is based on the finished work of Jesus Christ. So we thank you, Lord, for that, and we just give you praise. Thank you for uh, Dr. Self and this opportunity to be uh, here with him, Lord, and we just ask you to bless him and his endeavor in his school and all the things that pertain to us. And bless the word, the, the church family. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you, Dr. John, and thank you for listening. Hey, don't forget to check out my website, icmcollege.org. Check it out. We've got some free courses. Matter of fact, I have courses that you might want to be interested in that we can uh, offer to you for a very low price. Um, and, you know, check it. Please like and subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, Spotify, wherever you wherever you listen. Uh, appreciate your comments. Appreciate your ratings. Thank you so much, Dr. John Davis. Yeah, right. we need to do this again, man. <laughs> we'll, do, we'll do it again. All right. This All is right. Dr. Ray South, and this has been Self Talk. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed today's podcast, please subscribe, rate, and review our show on iTunes, YouTube, Spotify, Charisma Podcast Network, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Your review helps our show reach more people and spread the gospel. You can purchase Dr. Self's latest book, Hear His Voice, Be His Voice, on Amazon.com. Please visit Dr. Self's webpage at icmcollege.org for more information and free downloads.